<laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name is Tammy Traitline. These are my daughters, Caitlin and Paige. Paige is a senior Girl Scout and Caitlin is a junior Girl Scout about to bridge over to cadets. And we are here to talk about hiking. Now we've tried to make this video for uh, Trefoil TV now for a good two to three weeks. And every time we pick, the weather is not cooperative. Um, and today it's snowing and we're in an area that doesn't get really good reception all the time. So we are taping this because by the time we watch it, it may not be snowing anymore. It might be sunny. So we didn't want to confuse you about where we were. But we live out in Wyoming County and our troop is pretty active um, with hiking and camping and destination trips. And so we thought this is something that not everybody does. You might go to your park and do a little bit of hiking, um, but we're big at taking longer hikes and backpacking. And we wanted to let you know about something pretty unique called the Finger Lakes Trail. So when we get to the main trailhead, we will turn the camera around and give a little bit more information and some great ideas on what you should know about hiking. Um, but I, we thought we'd start here because when I turn the camera around, Okay, so I turned the camera around and this trail has white blazes. And so when you, I think this is something that scares some people who are out hiking, um, who are past beginner but not ready to jump in. How do you know where a trail goes? And if you look where we are, if you don't mind all the snow, um, we're actually on the edge of private property. And the Finger Lakes Trail goes through public and private property. But the Finger Lakes Trail is marked by the white blaze. Um, and so it is maintained by volunteers. And so you are looking for the white blazes. Now, you should never go on a trail. You should never go any further if you can't see the ne next white blaze. And I can see one coming up ahead. So as we get closer, we'll take a look at it. And you'll notice it's a little bit different than the first one that we looked at. Okay. So this is our next one. Now the first one we looked at was just one white square. This one is two. And when you see two blazes like that top to bottom, that means you need to stop. Now sometimes it's kind of obvious. You can tell by where Caitlin's standing. The road, the path kind of drops off to the left. Um, so it wants you to stop because it doesn't want you to go off the edge. It also wants you to stop because it changes. Now usually it'll give us a hint of what direction. But I'm going to stop and I'm going to look around. Coming in the other direction, yes. So they'll put them in both directions. And so I'm going to look around and when I look to the right, I can actually see the next blaze up ahead on the tree. And I cannot believe how much more it's snowing here. So we're going to keep going. And you can see we're getting closer. So this kind of helps you out. Now, the thing about the Finger Lakes Trail is it is maintained, like I said, by volunteers. There are a ton of sections of it. Um, and we'll talk about that more when we stop when we get to the main trailhead. And each section is volunteer run. And so not everybody will blaze everything as well as the next person. Um, the majority of a section of this trailhead is maintained by a Boy Scout leader. And this park is tricky because we found the orange Finger Lakes Trail symbol on the lamp post so that we knew where to cross the road to come do it. But some people kind of get confused about what they should do when they get to this part because it is on private property. So you can see the next marking is actually on a piece of metal that they put up for us so that we would know that we're still going. Again, they don't want us to go straight. That's why there's two. So we're going to stop and look around instead of going straight into all this brush because um, going into the woods is confusing. Now you can't see it because it's snowing, but I'm going to tell you straight ahead, there's a big thing of white and that's where we're heading to. 
Caitlin just said, oh, I see it now. Hi. It'll become more obvious as we get closer. Right, so I'm gonna look left and right here. There are quite a few white blazes kind of to stop us so that we don't mix up where we're going. Okay, we did a little camera magic there. So now you can see we got to the next trail stop and you can see they nicely put, they made it look like an arrow on top to tell us which way we need to look. And as I pan left, you can see the path that many hikers have used. But typically it's two blazes like that, that tells us to stop. And then the rectangle blaze would be to the left or the right to tell us which way to turn next. This person nicely made it. Now, as you notice, yes, there are some on the other side, like Caitlin had noted on the other tree. That's because if I'm coming in the other direction, I also need to stop here and know where to go next. Um, so they will mark both sides. So let's continue up this path. Now remember what I said, you don't want to walk too far without spotting the next one. So I'm not going to tell where it is. Those of you watching, you tell me when you see the next blaze. I, see I heard behind me, I see it. Again, they're not using traditional trail blazes. They're using little arrows, but they're telling us to stop. And they're telling us to turn right. And if I turn right, I have made it to one of the Finger Lakes trail registers. So that's the official symbol of the Finger Lakes Trail on the electricity pole um, that told us where to cross the road. It was actually in yellow. Yep, Kate, you can open it. You're gonna pull it straight towards you. Just pull the loop. Not the little the loop. loop. The loop, yeah. There you go. Look at that. Um, so always good to bring your own writing implement because you never know when it's gonna run out and you can see lots of people left. So this is a wet resistance paper. Um, so even if it frosts and gets humid in there, we'll still be able to write in it. And it's always good on these longer trails to mark that you're here. The nice thing about the Finger Lakes Trail is you can camp overnight along it. And that's the best way for people to keep track of where you are. Um, you might put something um, in it about conditions you know, all that. So Caitlin here is going to mark us down. So we're here on May 8th. I know today's not May 8th for those of you watching. Okay. And we're going to put it down as Girl Scout Troop. Girl Scout Trio. Girl Scout Trio, fair enough. We are not here with our full troop. and It was not a troop activity. And you might want to say something about the trail. You might want to let someone know if they're going the other direction that that drainage ditch is new. So they're going to need to be prepared with a walking stick of some sort. I just spelled drainage. Not a clue. <laughs> Uh-oh. D-R-A-I-N-A-G-E. Oh. We're not a snow snowy. for a while. Snowy, <laughs> cold, windy. Snowy, cold, and slightly windy. I would agree. Okay, yep, put it, you can put everything back in that bag. And now we're going to scan the area and see where our path continues. Up there. Up there. You're right, Paige. Up there. Okay. And that tells us where to go. But before we do that, we're going to do a little, um, now that we're out of the elements a little bit, we're going to do a little hiking, what's good to know about. Okay. So um, I got you all interested in what we're doing so far. So now we have to talk about some things that are really good to know about hiking. So... What we had to wear today was different than what we had to wear the other day if it had been sunny for us. Um, we had to think about how we were going to be affected for cold weather. Um, so hats, gloves, um, coats. What's not different is I'm still wearing about four layers, okay, um, underneath. 
Layering is the most important thing you could do for hiking because we're about, when I showed you how that trail was going to continue, it's uphill. My body's going to kick out heat. I don't want to be sweaty and not be able to go down because if I get sweaty, what happens? You get cold. You get cold, why? Because you're wet. Good answer. Um, so you want to be able to take off a layer and not get sweaty uh, because you don't want to get cold, right? What's sweat? Sweat is water from our body. And so when it hits the air, it's going to get cold. So layers were important. The other thing was important was what we were wearing on the outside. So it snowed a lot when we first got here and the edge of Caitlin's coat is already wet. Now, had she been wearing, or if I had been just wearing um, my Girl Scout sweatshirt on the outside, the water would have soaked in and it would have stayed wet. Cotton is the worst thing that you could wear when you are hiking. Um, you want something polyester, nylon, a, a combination on the outside. And so we made sure outside doings were not that. I wore hiking pants. Um, I have a liner underneath. I have two socks on and hiking boots. Um, what we, what, why do I have two hiking socks on, ladies? So you don't get blisters. So I don't get blisters. It's not because it's cold out. My feet would stay warm in these hiking boots, but blisters, yeah. So I wear a liner sock that is not made out of cotton at all. And over that, I put a hiking sock. And the liner sock stays on my foot. And then the hiking sock overneath, while I'm climbing up and down and I'm moving, it moves, but the liner doesn't. And when you move, you get blisters, blisters because of friction. 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 Yeah. So I'm creating the friction between my two socks and not my sock and my foot. Um, now, but I'm pretty glad that we had had hiking boots because I wasn't expecting to have to cross a muddy drainage ditch um, that was dug to get across to where this trail is. So you never know. I'm really glad I brought my hiking stick with me um, because we use that to brace ourselves because mud is slippery and the weather wasn't helping, making it even a little bit more slippery. And so we needed that. You just don't know and that's why you prepare. Um, can you hold that for me, Kate? So I'm gonna show you some other stuff that we brought. I always have a day pack on. They're just small little backpacks like this. Okay. Um, honestly, we are a family of six. We have about eight of these. Um, we bought them at Walmart. Walmart has great day hiking um, bags. They have all different compartments. Um, and this one even has the ability to hold the water. If you are one of those people who likes to fill the little camel bags, um, you can buy it with or without it. So if you have a camel bag and you want to slip it in, then the hose is down the side and when I'm wearing this on my back, my back, I can just drink from the water. I, on my backpacking trips, do use that sometimes, but I always have one of these, okay? This is a Nalgene body bottle. If you did not know, this company is actually out of Rochester, so you're supporting local um, when you do this. They're BPA free. What I like about them is they have the measurements on the side. So when we go backpacking and we're staying overnight, how many of these do we take per person? Two. Two. We took two. One to drink out of and one to cook with that kept our clean water. And so when we're doing um, dehydrated meals or something, I know how much water I can pour in and I don't need a measuring cup because it's already on here. I also tells me, did I get enough water in for the day? Now, we brought water bottles. It's cold. We're probably not going to think about drinking as much, and that's probably one of the worst things that can happen. Um, you can get more dehydrated when you call cold weather hike than when warm weather because you're not thinking about it. You don't have that hot sun. So if you are going to hike in the cold weather, drink. think about drinking twice as much. I'm going to slip this back in. Let's talk about some other things we have that we brought with us. Um, we brought a whistle. So luckily when we started this, none of the cars went by, um, but we, yeah, yes, I'm near the road, but that doesn't mean that I can't up there, you know, twist an ankle or something. And so this will definitely help. 
we brought appropriate snacks, which Caitlin's already gotten into. Um, we brought some almonds. We brought some fruit to give us some natural sugar. Pretzels. And then we did bring pretzels too. Um, but the most important thing that I brought was a map. Yes, was a map. Thank you, Paige. So here's my map. I put mine in these little protector sheets and I can use them a bunch of times. This is an official Finger Lakes Trail map. You can go to their website um, and you can ask for them to be sent to you, mailed to you, printed. They're about $3 a map or you can buy a full set. It actually helps, the money for their maps helps sponsor this Finger Lakes Trail. So I went, you can print it on your own, but if you had them print it, you get it on these gorgeous colors and everything I wouldn't have done on my own printer. Um, on the back of them, it has major important information. It tells me where I can access it, um, if I'm on state forest ground, if I'm on private ground, uh, where it's going across, what it's going to look like, if the blaze colors are going to change. So at the end of this, we actually get to a path that'll take you to Left Forest State Park. Now, Finger Lakes Trail has white blazes. We've been watching them, right, as we walk. When you go to a new one, it's blue. So they have offshoots. So I put some facts. Um, it is a mix of public and private land, state parks and state forests. It is pretty well blazed, except in the Catskill section. Remember when we looked up and we could see that well-worn path? We knew that that was the way to go. That's how it is in part of the Catskills. If you're just doing the main trail from beginning to end, it's 584 miles. If you include the offshoot pass, it's 950 miles in the Finger Lakes Trail system. It goes from the New York-Pennsylvania border near Allegheny State Park to the Catskill Forest Preserve in eastern New York. And if you walked all of the Finger Lakes Trail plus its offshoots, it would take you six to seven weeks. Um, they have branches that go for, up through to Niagara Falls. They go through parts of um, the big red one, but parts of um, into Syracuse. So there's lots. It's it's really neat. I did want to let you know that the Finger Lakes Conference is having a Finger Lakes 50. So if you walk 50 miles of this trail, you send in the form, you document the days and how far you went before the end of the year. They will send you an FLT 50 patch for you to wear. So that's kind of exciting for those of you who are patch people. Can you hold that for me? The snow is starting up again. Wegmans has these amazing Hit the Trails Finger Lakes books. Um, they put them out usually every year. This one is just for central portion from Letcherist to Route 81, but they have it through Rochester, they have it through Erie, at the Finger Lakes Trail office, which is right before you hit the Mount Morris Dam, they have extras of these that you can get. So when I bought my maps, they gave me that. And then this map, I have it bent over, you know, shows you everywhere it goes in New York State. So there's lots of things available for you. Now, I'm glad mine are in protectors today because they'd be a mess. So I have one more idea for you that we're going to talk about when we get up higher. Um, but for right now, I'm going to put this all away and zip up my bag. And we're going to get going on the trail. All right, the girls and I are hitting the trail. Lucky you, you have a stick. Lucky me, I was smart. I packed everything I needed. <laughs> Might be a great idea for an activity for troop meetings. I want a stick. We've had sticks. <laughs> We've had sticks um, huh. with us for I don't know many many years, and we've collected different medallions on them as we've gone cross country to remind us. So you should always be looking up, looking for that next white blaze. Anybody see it? right there. Anybody at home see it that's watching? Yeah. This part of the trail is really really nice. It's very very well marked. <laughs> it is a little tiring. We're going uphill. Oh. Uphill on the way, downhill on the way home.
Hazel, it's something else we should think about when we're hiking. Staying together. Staying together. How we leave the place. How we leave the place. Thank you. What's that called? Um, leave a place better than, than you found it. Leave a place better than you found it. But when we talk about we're in the outdoors, it's called leave no trace. Leave no trace. So, Caitlin found a stick. a stick. It was already broken off. It was already on the path. So we took it. Here's our next one. It's telling me to go which way, people at home? Say it louder, can hear you? You're right, yeah. it's saying to go left. And we're still climbing uphill. We're gonna be out of breath soon. But it's springtime. There's lots of pretty, pretty flowers and things growing. And maybe, you know, the girls are only hiking with me today. They might want to bring something home to their dad to show him. But if they pick something that's really pretty, what does that happen to the next hiker? They're not going to see it. So leave no trace also means leave behind and only take your memories, right? Maybe bring a sketchbook in your backpack and you can take a break. We're gonna take a break here for a second because we're uphill and we're out of breath. Woo! Um, so yeah, so you wanna do that. The other thing is to stay on the path like Paige said. When we traveled out west, we had, we had a section of the forest at one of the state parks. Do you guys remember what was there? Out west, when we were at Arches. Oh, uh, there was a rock. The rocks. There were the rocks. What was on the ground? Why did we stay on the path? See, oh, oh, the oh, plants that the take a hundred years to grow. Yeah, yeah so. And when you break it, it leaves an imprint and it takes a long time to break it, grow back. Yeah, so out there, we learned about the silver bush that grew on the ground. And see how high this green stuff on the ground is compared to Paige's leg? Out west, when the silver bush got that high, that had been growing for 150 to 200 years. So it was there when settlers had gone by. So if you strayed off the path and crushed it, um, you halted that many years of growth and couldn't guarantee that that plant was going to come back. So this green grass is where the path goes through. So we're okay to walk on what's this right in front of us. But I wouldn't walk on all of it going to the left. Right? Because this is the environment. Um, so you just never know. You know, there might be something really cool down there. Beautiful land. And you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. You really have to not be tempted to run off and take a look at what's going on. So we're okay to take this stick home with us because it was already broken off. It already fell off a tree. I'm not taking that big tree home in my car because it wouldn't fit. Um but I wouldn't break a smaller tree. So see, there's a tree sticking up in the middle. Kind of looks like Caitlin's walking stick, but it's a live tree. And I wouldn't pick it up for two reasons. One, bugs. <laughs> not bugs. Ticks. Not ticks either. Why wouldn't I walk over and get that one? Oh, the chance. Yeah, what we just talked about. I'd be crossing the trail and it's probably a live tree. So we don't want to pick live things, okay? All right, so we're going to continue up this a little bit further. But, I mean, quite honestly, this all looks the same. So without these white blazes to tell us where to go, it can be intimidating. And quite honestly, you can get lost. So there's another one. This time it's telling us we have to go to the right. Again, they're not using traditional blazing. Typically, it would have two marks and then a third one on top to the right. But this is just as helpful. Okay, you should always look up and not at the ground. Here's a nice tree branch that's coming down. Now, we can edit this path and pull it out so that the next person doesn't have it. It's already disconnected. It's already broken off. We're gonna tell the people around us that we're pulling it and we're gonna to toss it off the path and help out the next bunch of hikers. Okay, so we're gonna talk about this. So, 
our thought to you was maybe why not make a trail scavenger hunt in your backyard or around your neighborhood um, that you're going to clean up afterwards. And here's different ways you can do it. So you can use rocks, you can use pebbles, you can use sticks, you can tie together long grass. And so the girls are clearing some of the trail so you can see it. And we've gone, we stayed on the trail and we grabbed some of the twigs and whatnot we found. And they are going to make a couple of these. So I'm going to put this down for them. Good job, Caitlin, stepping on the stick to break it and not popping it towards your face so you don't get anything towards your eyes. Obviously, you wouldn't make them as this close together, but think about it. If in your backyard, I'm sure your parents would be thrilled if you cleaned up the sticks so they can mow the lawn. We had a lot in our backyard. And so... This might tell me start here and I need to go straight and I might walk and be walking, 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 walking until I get to this one, which if you look at the paper, stop. it means stop. And so now it might t tell me that I need to look around on the ground on where I go next. And so Paige made one that kind of told me it needs to go to the right. And then here's how it would look if it was going to go to the left. Now we have a lot of leaves, so on your grass or driveway or sidewalk it might work better. But why not make a surprise trail for your family and have something at the end? Maybe it's the movie you guys want to watch for movie night. Maybe it's a candy bar you are going to share with them or some fresh baked cookies or... So, or maybe a box of Girl Scout cookies if you have any left. Um, so lots... Lots of fun ways that you can take this um, out to the outdoors. The Finger Lakes Trails are open for anybody who wants to hike them at this point. However, they are asking that you stay only in the portion that's in your county until more of the state opens up. And they also ask that you do not go overnight. There's a lot of spots of lean-tos. So you could hike this, hike this, hike this, stay overnight in the lean-to, keep hiking the next day. They've just asked until the quarantine's been lifted that you don't do any overnight hiking or cra cross um, out of your county lines. So we super hope you enjoyed learning about the Finger Lakes trails, hiking with us, learned a little bit about appropriate clothing, things to look for to be less nervous about going on your first hike. Feel free to message us. We'd be happy to help you. Um, we'd be happy to have your troop go with our troop on a backpacking trip if you needed the help um, or just wanted some advice. But really get out in the outdoors and until you can do one of these amazing hikes, maybe do a little scavenger hunt your back around for all of your family. So until then, stay safe. We miss you all. Happy scouting.